So with all the attention on vagus nerve stimulators, how do you actually know if you have a problem with the vagus nerve itself? This is a great question that we got from the audience. So how do you think about it? Well, let's first of all talk about what the vagus nerve does. It kind of functions like a wire that transmits from the brainstem to, or like to your heart, to your lungs, to your gut primarily. And so part of that is signals that come from your brain telling those things what to do, but it's a really small part. It's only about 15% of the outflow. The other 85% is actually information that is sensory. So it's telling you about what's happening in the gut, telling you about what's happening in the heart, telling you about what's happening in the lungs. So how can we break down understanding that is looking at that feedback loop and seeing is that sensory motor circuit being completed? One of the ways you can judge that is by looking a little more complex and looking at things like a deep breathing test where you can look at respiratory sinus arrhythmia, which is basically looking at the interface between how you're breathing. So that change in the thoracic pressure is influencing the beat to beat changes in your heart. Kind of like you'd see people use like an Apple Watch or a Whoop or an Aura, but using it more specifically within that test to measure the ebbs and flows of that heart rate change. So that can be a really good tool. Another one would be looking at things like the response of the palate. So the soft palate in the back, you know, you got that little dangly thing in the back. There are two little arches by that, and those are considered the soft palate. And when we say ah, and we look really deep in there, that palate will elevate. Sometimes if we have problems with the motor part, like the, the descending part of that vagus nerve, we'll see that that palate is weaker on the side of the damaged vagus nerve so, or, or the output of the brainstem. So if it's on the left side, we look at the left vagus nerve, and if it's on the right side, we look at the right vagus nerve. And those can be two really key functions. Now we can also see problems with people getting kind of a little gravel, gravelly voice, like there gets a little scratchy, or we're having problems with swallowing. These are other indicators that might point toward that vagus nerve dysfunction, but you'd wanna look at them kind of in totality to understand number one, up or down, and then number two, kind of where in the level it's at. Is it up actually in the brainstem, not in the nerve at all? Or are we getting compression of that nerve somewhere? Most of the people I would say that are advocating for vagus nerve stimulation are actually advocating for things that are more related to being able to reduce arousal levels um, so we're changing the sensory feedback from the body as a way to give an augmented signal, which is a little bit more complicated, but it's worth thinking about if you're one of the people that's working on getting a vagus nerve stimulator. So I hope that helps. Ask more questions because it's actually a really deep topic. And sometimes we can see people get worse. Sometimes people knock it out of the park, but it really depends on if it's the right tool for you.